Hey guys, so it's me, Nicolette Mashile, and today is another day of rental investment is not for the faint hearted, right? So it's been a crazy two weeks in actual fact, but that's a story for me to relay later on. I just need to remind you that none of my videos constitute as financial advice. If you are looking for financial advice, please speak to somebody who is certified and registered with the FSDA. So let me tell you guys. So in July, one of my apartments, uh, number 88, the Giza has a problem, right? I'm thinking, okay, the Giza has burst. So I rushed to the apartment to go and see what is actually happening only to find out that the geezer has not really burst. It's just, um, it has gone rusted somewhere where it's like got plug points. So it's leaking, but it's leaking incredibly to a point where it actually needs to be replaced. So I'm like, okay, sure, not a problem. I'll replace the geezer. I've got no issue, right? I was mentally prepared to pay the seven, the eight, the nine, the 10,000 rand, even though it was, it, for me, it's really expensive, but I was ready to pay for it because generally a geezer lasts you quite a long time. So I was like, you know what, it's fine. This is what goes hand in hand with having rental properties, right? Okay, sharp, not a problem. So I get quotations, um, which is weird because when I called to get the quotations while I was there at the apartment, by the way, these apartments are in Douglasdale in the north of Johannesburg, right? Douglasdale is in between Four Ways and Bryanston. I got quoted on a price and then when I got to my house and I quoted the same company, when I asked for a quotation from the same company and they asked me, where do I stay? I said, Bryanston, the price changed. So again, this is something that I write about in the book, location tax. But in any case, I digress from my story. Okay, Shep, so I had quotations only to find out that um, the body corporate actually has an insurance policy for these geezers, right? Because te technically, these geezers are part of the apartment that you've actually bought. So they've got a, an, an insurance policy and I get an email from the, man the management agency to say, listen, um, we realized that your geezer needs to be replaced. We've got this, um, are you happy to pay the excess? Which is what owners are then supposed to pay the excess amount, right? So just like car insurance, you pay, you pay excess on the insurance policy. I'm like, sure, not a problem. How much is the excess? She says, no, it's 2.5. I'm like, listen, between 8,000 and 2.5, I'm more than happy to pay 2,500, right? No problem. My tenant's geezer gets replaced. We're all happy days. I get an email with the claim form. Okay, Shap, this is now end of July. So we're going into August. Now, August for me was a crazy month, right? Um, I was touring with Airports Company South Africa. I was doing uh, women's man things. There was just really no time for me to stop and actually like print out this claim form and sign for it and send it back. Which in my world, they could have done this. They could have done this for me on my behalf because I had already sent an email to say, let's proceed, right? But it's fine, they didn't do it and I forgot to sign the claim form. Okay, at the end of, no, beginning of November, I get an email to say, Hi, Miss Mashile. If you don't sign the, the claim form in the next 24 hours, we might not be able to claim from insurance. You were actually supposed to sign this thing within 30 days. And if you do not get this done now, we're going to bill you for the um, entire amount of replacing the geezer. I'm like, this sounds a little shady, but it's fine. So the next day I get home, I sign this thing because I was actually in Durban when I got this email. I get home that same night, I went to go buy a paper. Okay, I need to go buy a paper so that I could put my printer so I could sign this thing and send it through. So I did, I signed this thing and I sent it through. In my communication when I sent it through, I'm like, listen guys, there was nowhere in your email originally that said that I had 30 days to sign this thing. You guys didn't communicate that with me. So to threaten me and say, if I don't sign it, you're going to bill me for the entire geezer. is a little weird for me and it's a little threaty and I don't like the kind of relationship that you guys and I have, right? Because these guys have taken me for a clown before. When I moved into number 88, in actual fact, the bricks under the parking lot had oil stains and they were trying to charge me. I'm a new buyer. How are you charging me? And they were saying, yeah, you bought the entire thing. I said, no, no, I didn't buy the carport. Okay, the carport is what is called common ground and I get exclusive use because I've bought number 88, not because I own it. So don't come and... Another law. I passed legal theory one, two, and three. Even though I didn't pass my LLB, I did do legal theory and I know the law says, but it's fine. Anyway, so then I pay my levies at the end of November. Last two weeks ago, no, last week in actual fact, I don't know why I said two weeks. 
Last week, I get an email to say, a debtor's email to say, you are, you have unpaid levy fees. I'm like, what? How do I, me, a whole Nicolette, have unpaid levy fees? Like, that's the first thing I pay. And in short fact, my tenants pay for it because they pay me rent and then I use their rent to pay my levy. So how is it? Did I skip it by mistake? I mean, I do have quite a number of units in that estate. So perhaps maybe I might have missed it. So I go back to my bank statement. I'm like, nah. I paid this thing, you know? So I don't understand why I'm being charged 115 Rand for a late levy. So I check the bank sta the, the statement now. <laughs> it's sitting on like 6,000 Rand. I'm like, listen, I don't know. So there's an invoice there of 8,000 something, which is for a geezer. So I pick up the phone. I didn't even want to discuss that thing with anybody. Picked up the phone. I say to this lady um, who's responsible, who sent this thing. I'm like, listen, babes, I'm not understanding what's happening here. Can you explain it? She's like, yeah, you missed the deadline to sign the claim form. Uh, 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 uh. I'm like, nah, hold on. First and foremost, nothing in your communication when you send the claim form said I needed to sign this thing in 30 days. And nowhere did you even say that it needed to be signed in 30 days. And over and above that, you did not give me the heads up when the 30 days was the end day. Surely you also care about your owners. That's why you are the managing agency. I mean, duh. That's your part that you're supposed to play. That's how you not play your part. I don't deny the fact that I missed signing this thing, but I did eventually sign it and I sent it back to you. She's like, uh, and I'm going to say to her, also, this is your insurance as the body corporate. It's not my insurance. So I do not have preview of the T's and C's of what the insurance actually says. So unless you've given me the policy documents for me to read, I don't know that this thing needs to be signed in 30 days. Guys, you will not believe this woman's answer. She says to me, it goes without saying. It's the same as if you get into a car accident, you've got to report it within. I said, listen. There's no such a thing as it goes without saying. This is South Africa. Nothing goes without saying. You better say. I, I need to know. It's 30 days. Like, I mean, how, how, I said, how is that a professional answer? How is that even a, a professional response from somebody I'm supposed to trust with the agent, with managing the, a, the, 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 the estate where I've bought investment properties? How do you say it goes without saying? It does not go without saying. It doesn't. Like... I'm like, first and foremost, you know, and now I pull the race card because I was just like, listen, I don't have energy for this. I'm like, you know for a fact that my people are new in the space of rental properties. So you guys want to try and scam us. I'm like, if I was a new buyer and I didn't know all these things, how do you expect me to? So she says to me, no, we sent it with the annual financial reports. I was like, oh, really? I was like, shop. Guys, I was ready to go into my emails. Then I said to her, number two. You have loaded this thing on my levy statement, which is wrong because I'm not behind on levies. This is a separate invoice altogether. So please, madam, put this outside of my levy statement because my levy statement needs to be spotless because you are now screwing with my credit rating, right? Because these properties are in my name. So please, man, put this thing aside because it shouldn't be on my levy statement. I pay my levies. I pay my levies every single month. You are not hindering my opportunity or chance to be able to get a bond. If the bank wants to see my levy statement, am I paying my levies? Now I can't, it looks like I'm not paying my levies. No, Sissy. Guys, we got into a, obviously now a, 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 an argument now with this woman and she puts the phone down on my ear. If I say I lost my mind, it would be an understatement. In actual fact, she and my, one of my ex-boyfriend needs to hold hands and sing Kumbaya because every single time I open my mouth, people think I'm screaming, especially the two of those people. Anyway, I call again. When I call, the reception is like, no, Miss Mashida, she couldn't have put the phone down on your ear. We've had telecom, tele, uh, telecom issues. It just cuts the line, you know? And I'm like, lady, I know when someone cuts the phone on my ear, that is not the telecom line. Do you know how many times boys have cut the phone line on my ear? Please. So anyway, eventually I get put through to another lady. Her name is Jackie, and we have a conversation. And I say to her, listen, first and foremost, I did not know about the 30 days. I, I'm not denying the fact that I didn't sign that thing in time. Yes, uh, from July to November is a long time. And, I, and I, I'm fully saying I'm taking responsibility for that. But what I did not know is the 30 days, first and foremost. Number two, I don't want that thing on my lady statement. Number three, over and above that, you guys should have a decline from the insurance that says they are not going to be paying it. Give me that later so I can go to the ombudsman myself. Because 
clearly the insurance company is now negating its its responsibility to pay for a, a claim that is legit you guys have replaced the geezer so show them the invoice that you've replaced the geezer and show them where the fault was why now they're going to say no to paying just because of 30 days no that's not a real thing so i said you know what up until you guys have given me the letter that actually says we're declining the claim from the insurance company on a letterhead of the insurance and there must be a, a checking number that I can call and chase up of this thing, you're not going to bill me for the, for, the, for the entire thing. What you're going to bill me for is the access as we have agreed on. And she's like, okay, no, I'm not really the person you should be speaking to. I'll get the guy who you need to be speaking to to call you. I'm like, sure, not a problem. This is last week. No call. The entire afternoon, no call. The next day, no call. The next day, no call. So this morning, oh no, so last week, Monday, they now start sending, not even, oh yeah, it's on holiday, on the 16th, yesterday. They start sending out now, you know, our, our statements for, the, for this month so we can pay our ladies. So I'm like, okay, maybe these people have rectified this. This is probably why they haven't called me. They've probably rectified this thing. It's not a problem. Shot. I opened my levy statement, guys. That damn thing is still there. And now the new levies have been loaded on there. The 115 rand penalty fee has been loaded on there. And I'm just paying like well, my 9, 10, 30, I mean it was sitting on 12,000 rand that I am owing in levy fees. In what world? In what world? Honestly, how now, brown cow? Honestly, <laughs> sent an email. <laughs> I now sent it to the main guy. I'm like, listen buddy, I don't appreciate the way I'm being treated as, a, as an owner. As somebody that is helping you guys keep your job, I don't appreciate how I'm being treated because you do know that I've got four votes at the next annual general meeting. And this will be reflected in my vote as to whether or not we keep your company to be working for us. First and foremost, you're playing with me. I don't owe levy fees. Don't put that invoice on my levy. Number two, until you have shown me a decline letter, I am not going to be paying for that geezer. Give me the decline letter. Let me go to the ombudsman myself because I know the ombudsman. I know him by name. It's, it's not a him. But I know. Okay? Literally, not even an hour later, Hi, Miss Mashile, we have removed this and this and this and this and we have removed this and this and this and now you are just left with your levy, your normal every month levies. We will make sure that you get a separate invoice for the excess. Shut. Get that. I get my statement. Perfectly corrected. I get my invoice for the excess. Now it's 1.5. It's not even 2,500. Let me tell you, you need to know your rights. And when something doesn't seem right, you need to question it. Don't just keep quiet, guys. I was really, I was really, I contacted my lawyer. She's on holiday. I saw her, her, her WhatsApp statuses. She's already on holiday, but I was ready to send a, let, a lawyer later because you know what? I'm not going to be taken for a clown because. The thing is, they use our ignorance and our lack of no to pay us. Imagine if I had paid that 8,000 Rand. I saw them dancing. So anyway, generally the reason for this video <laughs> is so that I can tell you guys a lost story for 2019. But also just to remind you that, you know, when you go into the rental space and you are making an income and you're investing in rental properties, you need to know your rights also as a landlord and as an owner and as somebody that owns properties because if you don't everybody else around you will use whatever is available to play you and the first rule of money is don't lose money doesn't matter what the situation is don't lose money the second rule of money is revert to rule number one